Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that would happen, wouldn't it? Oh, what a terrible intro. I just got into my minecart to travel and I thought, when we're traveling, we'll do the intro. And uh, I always do this and I always crouch and say hello. Uh, oh, jeez. I'm supposed to be a professional Minecrafter. What is going on? Hi, there's a creeper behind me. I'm recording at night. This is a terrible idea. Okay, okay. Take number 12. Remember, professional Minecrafter. Don't, don't press shift. Don't press shift. Yes, that's right. Okay, bam. Here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Mesa Vide server. We are in the Netherwart Tunnel. And where is it taking us to? Somewhere over here. Aha, the Netherwart Farm. I have extended this. And you can see that the design reappears again. Oh, I'm taking damage. Let's stop doing that. Let's stand off of these magma blocks. That's the one downside to using those, but I think it's worth it because they look really cool. I have headed over here to show you what I've done. We've built this little entrance, and I've brought with me some blocks to fill in on these walls. This is basically the exact same pattern as you saw over in the other part of the tunnel. And down below, we've got to design another little pattern as well, as we're going to have... A little walkway here that leads into the Netherwalk farm, which I accidentally harvested earlier, and I haven't gone and replanted it since, since I haven't had the time. I thought mushroom blocks would look really good here. So these levers, by the way, used to sort of be on that block and that block, so I've put them round to the side, which gives us... Hey, wait a minute, didn't I have a different idea here? There we are, that's much better. Hopefully there'll be enough light for all of this. Got to replace that block as well and put the button back on. <laughs> yeah, I basically pressed the button to test that it was okay, but I'd forgotten that I pointed my redstone into the farm. And I've gone and got the wrong sort of clay here, haven't I? That's brown, and that one there is actually grey. I'll come back and change that later. So, does this look okay, or does it look a little bit on the silly side? I think the brown mushroom on the floor doesn't look as good. There we go, that's the way it's done. So now we have a nice entrance with uh, a button on the wall to activate. Need to put a sign below it. Just so if anyone else comes by and wants to use it, they know what to do. And now all we've got left with this project is to build the storage area all the way down at the bottom. We're going to come back to that later. And we actually have to do the above ground area as well. And while I'm over here, I must remember to throw some minecarts into this hopper. Picked up a few more. Make sure we've got loads of them here to get back. And that's this little area. It kind of looks like a light source is needed somewhere around here, right? So I'm going to have to throw something in. Maybe an end rod. Anyway, <laughs> on the outside here, we've got this area to sort of transform and build something on top of the glass that we have up there. But we're going to focus on something else for now. And I've used all of my minecarts. I threw them all away, didn't I? And that something else is our brown mushroom farm. We're going to build it down the bottom here. I kind of knew that's where we would be building it, but I've been messing around with how it would fit into that space and how we could potentially use the spawner that is above. So initially I wanted it to be here, the entrance. And then it would have meant that our farm would have been sort of close to other blocks and things in the area if we wanted it to be centred in front of this entrance. You know how neatness is with those things? I always have to try and have some sort of form to follow. So if we put our entrance over here, when we turn to the left, and we're using the bone block thing again, uh, we will be in centre with this. This is where the farm is going to go. It's going to go down there. We're going to have our water streams around here, and then above it there's going to be a mob spawner. And I was thinking what we could do is just have the roof as if it were a normal roof, and then have this thing uh, drop the zombies down the side, and then we could have like a big window at the back where the zombies like land on magma blocks and take damage, and they're just there to watch them die. Which is kind of cruel, but then again they're already dead technically, right? I mean the zombies. <laughs> I do enjoy this. You know, I'm really going to like this farm because you get to do a load of instant mining. Everyone loves instant mining. It's so satisfying. <laughs> anyway, I want to find out, does this work with the red mushroom as well? Because then it will be a farm for both of these, right? Let's pop you in there. Let's see what happens. It might take a while. This one has a different shape, of course. And that certainly... Oh, is taking a few attempts. Hey, it's dark in here. Someone call a technician. The lights have got out. <laughs> Wow, okay, that's interesting. So this comes all the way down to where the water is, and it overrides the position of the water. It can be placed or, or grown into there, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, these things aren't fussy at all. And by the way, thanks so much for all of the feedback. It really does feel like, though, we've got a very optimal farm here. Some people suggested changing the redstone, but I think we kind of got exactly what we wanted last episode. Uh, but one thing to mention is that when this thing fails to grow, it does indeed update again, so... It's probably making a few failed attempts there and updating the observer like we saw in the last episode. That is because the mushroom, when it's being 
uh, you know, grown with bone meal, it's increasing its chance to grow into a mushroom. But then when it gets to the point where it can become a mushroom and it tries to spawn in, if it fails, it then updates the mushroom and that's why the observer block gets activated again and that's why we ended up coming to this little circuit here because this one works different to that anyway we've got to move this down into the room over here haven't we look how close it is to where we built that one so the first thing we're gonna do is dig further in that direction because I actually want to have a ring around the outside here when I started to place in the water after digging out this space I realized that it's kind of right in the middle of everything you know you walk straight into it <laughs> it's unavoidable so how do we get out of this water I don't want to have a little step up like this because it means we have a missing gap and I think what I'd like to do is have some ladders here it'll be really easy with depth strider on just to walk up to the edge tap spacebar and out you go but it feels a bit weird having the walls right here and then the ladders right at this bit so I think what we want to do is actually change this up and let's use this brown clay right here and have a ledge that goes around the outside of the room but if we're going to do that it means our mushroom blocks are more likely to land on these ones so that's the reason that we're going to push it out one more block since I placed brown blocks there I decided to use them underneath these stone slabs which is going to be our perimeter around the outside and then I extended it down under the water so all of that is nice and neat and tidy but we're actually going to have to remove this stuff temporarily to do the redstone down below which I'll do in a moment and I may make a modification to the circuit that we have so I'll be sure to show you that if we make any form of modification but what I want to focus on before we do the redstone is the walls in this room and for the longest time I've been picturing using the red mushroom the logic in my head was we're farming brown mushrooms let's put the red ones on the wall to contrast this but then I realized actually <laughs> we're farming both of them so maybe we need a mix now if I just put down a flat wall like this I'm pretty sure it's gonna look kinda of boring yeah not really that great mixing them together maybe with stripes something like that probably not gonna look too interesting either is it every challenge is an opportunity to be creative and these don't look that good at all do they <laughs> when you're closer to them they don't look so bad but from a step back it don't look great at all we need depth we need depth in these walls we need some sort of theme we need an idea we've got to get creative here so I had to record because I found a new color of minecraft block uh, this over here I believe both of those are the same color but for some reason this one appears to be darker let's throw let's throw all of these into the water high there you go so there goes all of our red ones so let's break that one first right and you see it's that type and then <laughs> that one stacked up with it let's put it back and it's back to normal strange little bug right anyway I'm in the process of moving the room over by four blocks because I figured what we would need to make the room look interesting is some depth some depth in the walls you know and if we go over to this side you'll see that we've got this strip of blocks here and then we can't go back any further because what I want to do is keep this bone mill frame and have it so there's another little pathway going down there and that leads to our little uh, rocket launcher thing down there uh, I also realized that when you do this bone mill thing you use the space on the other side so this right here would be used up by this wall so I'm just gonna make it easier to work with that and move this all over by four blocks which is significantly harder because I've got to rebuild everything again right <laughs> so I've been placing in the redstone and what we're gonna do over the back here is just put in some slab like that on either side and then some spruce stairs in the middle it's gonna stand out from everything else but I think that's okay that kinda works so we've got mushroom blocks in the walls for our entrance we've got the brown ones at the top and I wanna have the light source in the ground so we'll probably have lamps in the middle of each of these little segments and what material we use down here I'm not sure but this yellow clay is gonna have to go but when it comes to putting in the redstone I was thinking we should automate the the bone mill that goes into it so here you can see there is a comparator but do you know what I just broke the block with the torch on let's put that back so now you can actually see that behind the hopper is a comparator so that's gonna detect if there's bone mill in here we've got a little chain of hoppers and droppers going down and then the hoppers feed all the way into the dispenser if I could jump properly now you can see that right there so what we've got to do next is fill in all of this brown clay like so and that will protect all of the redstone and then give it a little test hi we have an intruder in the base 
And it's a skeleton. I was just thinking a moment ago, wouldn't it be great if that spawner up top was a skeleton spawner? Because then you're using this, you're using bone meal, and you're passively farming them as well. I've just noticed, though, that that is slightly out of range. Please don't tell me. Oh, goodness me. It's basically out of range. Oh, man, because I've moved it over. It's now. Do you know what? I'm not even going to fuss. I'm just going to make this thing anyway. And if you just happen to stand over here and it's not working, fine. Because I have moved this thing all over the place several times. It's just typical, trying to squeeze everything into like an area so you've got room for all your different things. It takes a lot of planning. You end up overlooking something, you know? Another thing I've done, by the way, is sort out all of these ender chests. I mentioned earlier how messed up they were. And when it comes to the names of these boxes, I think we need to find a way to really highlight and emphasize what is going on. So I'm going to pick these all back up and put them in. And it feels like every time I do a project, I pull out like loads of these, which I think is actually a good sign considering how uh, organized all of this stuff is now. And there's a few things there I'm supposed to put inside some of those shulker boxes. So these ones all down here have been emptied, so much better. And as we put our mouse over some of these, we should see, there it is, light sources. So look at those stars. I thought that would be a way to make it pop. We're using, I forget what it's called, but they're like emojis. They're basically codes you can put in for extra characters. And then Bone Mill's got some symbols as well. So I really just want to like make them jump out. And you'll probably see this change as time goes by. I've only done those two for now though. That is so going in the right direction. I do like that. I feel like brown up there is where we're going to introduce the next block. In fact, I can go up there and uh, and chuck some in. Maybe after there's like a strip of this, we then have something come out again. Actually, I feel like that should maybe be directly on top of those. But if you look at where that redstone lamp is, that's the height of the mushroom. It's not going to go any higher than that. So we can now bring this inward. So I feel like we're going to end up with a little bit of a dome effect going on. Yeah, I'll have to play around with that, but I very much like how spruce wood matches these textures. You know, white, brown, and red going together pretty well there. This thing works, by the way, and when you use it, you have to stand in this corner, and not just on this block, right, in this corner, all the way over to where the water is. Thank goodness for that, because it would really suck if it just happened to be like you need to stand in the water. So, let's give it a test well. It's going to go dark in here. Or, no it's not, because we have glowstone down here and it is shining through the carpets. That's really cool actually, so you don't have to worry about it getting dark if you do the red ones as well. This farm is just going extremely well at the moment. This has turned out so good. When you see this room, you're going to love it. However, this last little bit that I have right here might not look as good. This is an idea that I'm just going to try and see how it goes. And what I want to do next is put in some redstone blocks like this. So there was a redstone block above the lamp. That's what gave me the idea. And then that would mean we wouldn't need one there. So let's be efficient. Let's throw a torch up here as well. Probably want to put a few more on the top of this build. And then let's wander around the side and walk into this room. Because boy oh boy do these materials look really good together. Okay, it looks alright. And then you look up and wow, yeah. That's really nice until we get to the redstone. I need to take that in for a moment, but look at this. This right here is terrific. <laughs> That's actually turned out really great, and of course it suits the theme of the room. The redstone, not so much. I feel like it's okay, but you probably could have done with something better there. I may come back and change that another time. For now, though, I'm going to pick up these blocks. And let's just double check, now that the room has been built around it, that we can still grow the mushrooms here. Should all be good? Yes, look at that. We're doing absolutely fine. It seems that I missed a few blocks over here, not on that side. I know some of you will comment about it, so letting you know that I fixed it, basically. I'll tell you what, I just love doing interiors in this game. I find them so much easier, and when they come together like this, it really is rewarding. It looks amazing. <laughs> I love it. And uh, over here is where the zombies are going to drop down. So we're going to have glass right here at the front, level with the bone. And then behind it, what I'm going to do is put in some sea lanterns here for light, some magma blocks there to kill the zombies, and then we're going to use this ladder to get up to the top area. So what we need to do now is build a platform and a water stream underneath 
the zombie spawner and then bring all the zombies down around to the side and basi basically just drop them into this little 3 by 3 area. Now I'm not going to fuss with making any of that stuff pretty though, we're just going to build it out of clay blocks as it's purely functional and all of this stuff wouldn't be visible anyway. Go away, creeper. I was just thinking, sod's law, it comes over and blows this thing up. Hi, zombie, of course, because I need to throw down some more torches as I do this. Uh, I got some comments from you guys who are very observant that apparently, yep, after all that time we went around looking for brown mushrooms, there were some in these caves right next to where we ended up building the mushroom farm. How typical. So it is now time for some of that moment of truth. Will it all work? It should actually be all fine. But I'm going to hang out here with the zombies for a moment. Can we put that all the way back down at the bottom? We can. That's amazing. I must remember to fill this back up as well. Ah, and it does that every time. So you've got to put a couple of blocks in front of it to get it to regenerate the water source. So all we've got left to do now is to take out these blocks which are above my head. As you can see, it is a little bit of a pain at the moment. Actually, what I want is an ender pearl. <laughs> so here we go. Hopefully I don't die miserably. I've got some golden carrots to regenerate my health with. I've got my armor on. It's got fawns as well. And we're going to take out all the blocks that don't have torches on first. Apparently my brain is feeling active today. Uh, yes, we should put some blocks right here as well, because a zombie could spawn on top of the spawner and then stand there forever. So these are the last torches. Oh, I've got to knock the ones off of the spawner as well. And now we get plunged into darkness, and we've got to zip past this little guy over here. <laughs> Whiz down and around, finish blocking up this area. Oh, I missed my jump. And now they're going to get unleashed into this area, which is fine, because they're just going to end up collecting in there for now. So <laughs> while they're doing that, we will pop over here and put the glass in place. Right, we've got to fill in this gap here so that the zombies can't escape. And let's wreck some fools. Another fool is getting wrecked over there as well. <laughs> That's great. So when you stand here using the farm, the occasional zombie is just going to drop down on here and uh, die on the magma blocks. And if you were wondering, why the, by the way, why there was so much water up in the water room, because it's a little bit inefficient, technically, uh, it's because... We wanted the water to go far enough over this way so no water would land on top of those blocks and then you wouldn't have water dripping into the room. So I'm going to stand here for a second. We should see another one in a moment. I can hear the zombies. Hopefully they're not getting stuck up there. We've created something very bizarre. Uh, social zombie spawning is happening. So they're spawning in this room. That's like the worst thing. I've always really disliked the social spawning. I've literally seen, you know, zombies spawn on top of me. And they are falling down here, but can you hear that hideous racket? So, we want to come and have a look right here, I believe. Oh, maybe it's one block closer. Let's break that one. There's loads of them caught in this little space. And I don't understand why it is they're not going all the way to the edge. There's actually a block there. There's a block there that doesn't have water on, but I thought I moved the water source so that they would land on... Well, that's going to make a mess. Great. And now zombies are spawning everywhere. Okay, I've got to be super careful now. My health is low. The social spawning means they just continuously spawn in this place. And I can't seem to get close over here to where the water starts. You see, I take a zap. I think what I did there is I broke the sign that was blocking the water. And now they're all grouping up in that space. I was about to say it's fixed now. It's it's not. The social spawning means that they'll end up in this room. Which really sucks. I mean, I wish there were some better rules with that so that you could prevent it from happening. But that just seems to be the way it goes. So it was a nice little feature to have that over there. But it looks like we're going to have to disable it. And also, <laughs> I left the ladder in there. Jump. Space bar. Upwards. Right click, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, it worked. It worked in the end. I just noticed that Mr. Vintage Beef is online and he hasn't been doing a lot of flying. I think he needs some encouragement to get some rockets. I'm not sure if he has any or not. I just asked him, he said that he could make some and there he is. We've just got a perfect copy spin around and not die. Oh jeez, okay. There we go, let's plop this thing down for him. <laughs> well, turns out Beef had to go, so never mind, but hopefully he'll be able to enjoy his time on the server, flying around and seeing it, because of course... Hermitcraft is one that looks great from the skies. In fact, I imagine most servers probably do once you've built a few things here and there. So I was looking through my chests and I was thinking, we have never really used obsidian as a building block. And if it doesn't look good, 
It's going to be a bit time consuming to get rid of it, but I was thinking that on the walls. It's dark and gloomy, and I actually want to put my light sources well. Do you know what? I was going to put sea lanterns in here, but I think it will clash a little bit. There is something else. This one right here is my light sources block. Um, so on the ceiling, I want a sort of shade of grey that will be between that and andesite, which we're going to put on the bottom. So I was going to do a ring of this with one of those sea lanterns in the middle. But actually what we'll do is an end rod like that, which is what we've done in the other tunnel around the corner there. And by the way, I put in a little chest for the red and brown mushrooms on the side here. So these ones have got end rods at the top. I mean, you barely notice the purple when you're walking through. In fact, if you're looking straight forward, look at that. You might catch a glimpse of it. <laughs> Very cool. My eyes were at the top of the screen when I was doing that, just in case yours weren't. Um, yeah, so anyway, heading back over here, we're going to put andesite on the ground, we've got the clay on the top, and we're going to put sea lantern down here, just one of it right here in the middle, and that's going to have a cobweb on it, because above there is where I want our, you know, our little exit area, although I haven't gone and checked that there isn't some important blocks, like blocking this bit here, if we were to go further in that direction to where it was before, uh, we would start to push outside, which means we'd have to do terraforming, so hopefully that will go all the way up to the surface so so far it's looking all right let's put this like so and I think we should bring these slabs through to this lamp over here well it is no work of art but it certainly looks cool in here I'm glad we decided to use obsidian you don't see that very often and I think for a long tunnel you'd actually quite like seeing this texture on the walls anyway I was just thinking to myself is this the best way to use this we might need some blocks around it as well and let me just show you. If we jump on this, tap spacebar, and then look upwards. Well, I was expecting to sort of bump my head into the wall somewhere there, but apparently that didn't work. Let's try that again. So we jump, we tap spacebar, we look upwards, we use the rocket, and that was kind of crazy. I feel like that went really well, but could easily have gone nowhere near as good. Uh, should we go back in that way? <laughs> Would be the quickest way back down there, right? Okay, let's do that again. We run, we jump, we tap spacebar, we look upwards, we use the rocket, and we get stuck. <laughs> so, I reckon actually we need some blocks to sort of bounce. Yeah, what is going on with my view? That was confusing. I thought I was looking forward, but my mouse movements were inverted. <laughs> like, that looks like you're just looking forward normally, right? And now I can see a part of myself. Wait a minute! Wait a minute, I'm sinking! What's going on? Am I actually going below the ground, or are my feet just not yet technically touched it yet? Okay, I think it was the second one. I'm wondering if black glass would have been a better choice. It might have been. Then it would have matched the obsidian, but then this one matches the bones. So whatever. You run into it, you tap space by, you look upwards, use your rocket, and off you go. So there's one more thing I wanted to do in this episode, but it kind of got away from me. That was doing a storage area for the netherwalk farm. And I just gathered up some materials to go and do that, but then I thought I'm kind of rushing it because I don't have very much time left in which to record and then render my video. So rather than rush that thing, I think it would be better to take our time when we do that project. So that means it's going to be it for me this episode. Hi, do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like. As always, thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next episode. So ciao for now. Bye-bye.